right, so this is week seven, and it's a Kenny Burrell lick. Oops, I got trim low on. Hold on a second. Oh. So it's D7. It's from uh, All Night Long, but it's uh, the version that is on Live at the Village Vanguard. Roy Haynes is on drums. It's a really great record, the whole record. Uh, just grooving and cool licks abound. And this is one of them. So it starts out. Starts out with a slight bend. Just pushes that up on the 6th fret. Then you go with your 3rd finger to the 8th fret. Then you go with your 2nd finger to the seventh and slide down real quick to five. So that's right out of pentatonic. So that's the box everyone learns first. If you go to the next box up from it, in fact for a lot of people they think of that as major pentatonic because that's the root you start on right there. So the B flat, major pentatonic, is the same thing as G minor. But you can think of it either way. A lot of jazz guys, a lot of rock guys, people tend to think of it as. They'll think of that as minor. So if you're looking for a formula, what I think of it is this. I think of it as resolving down to the one. In other words, D7 resolves to G. But instead of playing a G major chord, you play your minor pentatonic scale. So now if we were in E, we'd play A minor pentatonic. So anyway, going back to where and playing over a D chord, you can think of all of that as minor pentatonic. Then you're gonna walk up chromatically. So we went, we hit our G. We're gonna walk up chromatically from B flat to B to C right there in your pentatonic scale. So we've got this so far. Then you're gonna jump back here and play a C sharp or D flat. You could think of it as basically from our um, D chord, that's your root, so that's your major. Seventh is the way I would think of it because that's what it is. So, then right back down pentatonic. Five, three, five. So we got. So, learn to move that. Uh, let's do E like. Our big uh, chord there. Uh, and back to kind of what I was doing at the beginning, there's two ways I was kind of looking at it. You can start by, instead of playing, just play any of your pentatonic licks. but just wind up back here and play that little chromatic lick. You can also slide into this and add another note. Which is pretty cool. As opposed to... So you could start out with the 
chromatic lick and then play a pentatonic. You know, that's all I was doing at the beginning was sort of those two concepts. Either playing my own pentatonic lick and then playing this chromatic lick or playing the chromatic lick and then playing a pentatonic lick. So you're basically taking something you know really well but using it in a slightly different setting. But with all this stuff, once you start learning it, start messing with it because that's really how you improvise uh, and that's really how you find different pathways in and out of it and different pathways in the middle and that's basically how you start to make it your own and it's not just a lick although you can play that which is good to have and good to have in your arsenal but you can also start to learn from the lick and basically make it your own and you can use it in any setting because you're not tied to playing it exact you have that ability if you need to or if you want to but you also have the ability to sort of weave in and out of it and add extra things to it. Uh, but that's really just the way to practice and, and, uh, and to make these things your own. And you've got an idea now, it's more than just a concept. Anyway, hope that helps. Uh, join us next week and we'll have somebody else. Thanks.